Welcome to your practice. So we are going to start with an inversion um, today. So you wanna have your blankets handy and ready. We'll just go ahead and do that now before we do our centering work. So you start with the pillow fold and we move into a half pillow fold. So that means the folded edge goes to the fringe edge. It makes a really nice narrow little fold and you'll place that towards the top of your mat or off to the side, wherever you can reach right now. And then you'll do the same thing with the second blanket and you'll place them on top. You want to have access to a strap as well. So have that handy too. I'm just going to go ahead and put that near my head. And then it's always good to have a block handy in case you need that for neck support. Okay. So bring the sitting bones back and apart. Rest your hands on the center of your thighs, not too far forward to the knees so that the elbows can softly bend in towards your ribs. Take your hands and place them on your rib cage so that the thumb is on the back side and the fingers drape around the front side. Close your eyes. And now I know that you're not standing, so I know that this um, cue is a little bit odd, but I want you to imagine if you were standing that your lungs were stacked right over your feet. Let's see what that might feel like if, if you can imagine that. And then bring your throat right over your heart. And just notice as you do those two things, do you notice the thumb side of your ribs descending? And if you do, I want you to counteract that by bringing the frontal ribs down. So now we want to feel that the ribs are fairly even front to back because the next movement we're gonna do, and you might wanna blink open your eyes, is we're gonna do rib polishing. So we're just gonna circle the ribs around and I want you to imagine that you had a little cleaning rag on the outer edges of your ribs and you were cleaning out the inside of a barrel. So I want you to, as you clean out the, or wipe out the inside of that barrel, try to see where, and I, and I know it's round so there's no corners, but I want you to see if there's a corner of that circle uh, that you can't get to very easily. And I want you to slow down there and try to get into that corner. So it could be in the back or the front, or it could be both, probably. Or if you have scoliosis, it's probably both. And you just take a few more breaths to really get into those ribs. And then go the other direction you're just trying to mobilize that thoracic spine, super important for back health. One more breath, noticing which corner is hard for you. And then whoo, that might have been hard on your hands. So bring your hands into a little fist. You're going to release the fingers and you just, you scoop them over. And so it's like you're trying to take your own pulse and you just reach the tips of the fingers towards the inner wrist and stretch those wrists in the opposite way. Take a cleansing breath. Mm, and release out of that and just roll the wrists around, sparkle your fingers a little bit as you do so. And then one more little warm up action, fingertips behind you on the mat, bend the elbows straight back towards the wall behind you. Press down with your fingers and lift your heart. And you'll notice I didn't say drop your head back. So you actually leave the head pretty neutral. So the chin drops in so that you can start to feel into the spine. Like from the very lowest part of the spine, all the way up through ribs, all the way up through chest. It's as if you had a hook on the sternum and you're pulling it up to the sky and then gently release out of that. Inhale your arms out to the side. As you exhale, bring them forward, interlace fingers, take your palms to the front and take cat tilt. So look down at the belly, pull the lower belly in. See if you can pull the frontal ribs back to the back ribs and see if you can bring the sternum in and down as if it could point to your tailbone. Take the neck a little bit out of the pose, so don't just jam the chin into the chest. 
because it'll save the upper back. And then spin to your left just a little bit and spin to the right. So it's just like the hands go across the horizon. They go to the left and they go to the right. Good, come back to center. I just thought of one more like that that I love um, to help mobilize that mid back. Take your hands now and they're still interlaced, but your hands are flat or your arm, your, yeah, it's like you're resting on a counter. And just gently shrug the shoulders so you get really long in the spine. Turn to the left, and then like you're pressing on that counter, take cat tilt. Press on the counter and try to just isolate cat tilt. And then scoot your elbows on the counter a little bit more to the left, press down and think cat tilt. Scoot the elbows just a little bit more to the left, Press down and think cat. Woo! Come out of that. Release your hands, roll them around, cleansing breath. That's a great way to mobilize the rib cage. So let's try that the other way. Let's goofy finger interlace just because I love balance like that. Bring your hands to that countertop. Inhale, shrug a little bit with the shoulders and lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, bring your hands across that countertop to the right and then I'm sorry, that was the inhale, exhale, cat. So you're pressing down on that counter and pulling your belly into cat. So press down, scoot to the right, press down, cat shape. Inhale, press to the right, press down and cat. And then inhale, whoo, come up to center. Take a cleansing breath, roll the shoulders, take your legs out in front of you. That was a long sit and just wiggle your legs, get a little synovial fluid going into those hip joints. Big deep breath, you can push down and lift up the heart again. Come back into the opposite crossing. Actually, I keep thinking of one more thing before we go into our centering, because it's so nice to go into centering with a body that feels a little more open. So you're gonna take your uh, left hand out to the left, take your right hand onto your right shoulder. As you glide those fingers out to the left, you lift up that right shoulder, I mean right elbow, excuse me. And so you're not really thinking so much about bowing as you are lengthening. So lift the shoulders up, get into those intercostals, those little muscles that are so powerful in between each rib and try not to let the head hang forward. See if you can drape right over that left shoulder. One more squeeze, down with the sitting bone, up with the elbow, like you're coming up inside the body. And then gently release that. Take a cleansing breath, roll the shoulders. We're gonna try that second side. So bringing fingertips out to the right, uh, left hand on left shoulder. And as the fingers kind of scoot out to the right, you lift up that right right elbow and you try not to let the right hip lift up too much. You want to drop it down and you, and you try not to let the head drop forward as well. It's straight over that right shoulder and then you drive that elbow, that left elbow into sky. And you might notice that it takes a little oblique action on the other side to help you. So you can do that too. You can squeeze those obliques and reach up last breath and exhale return from here just roll the shoulders one more time and then let your hands float into prayer and take a moment here's our centering practice now we've brought ourselves into a little more alignment and stretch it should already feel better to be in this sukhasana comfortable pose and let's just make an offering let's set an intention for our practice today and offer that with a bow. Inhale, come back up to sitting. Release your hands, blink open your eyes. Okay, here's where we go into our nice restorative pose just to open up the heart. So we're gonna bring that bolster stack on to the side. I mean, in the long way of the mat. You're gonna have a block, maybe just have it at the top edge of the bolster, the flat way, 
just to make sure that it's there if you need it, so you don't have to fuss around for it. The legs are extended out straight, so your booty just tucks right in there at the edge of the long bolsters, and then you make a loop. So that loop is like putting on a skirt. You just reach it around your feet and you bring that loop all the way up to the center, very center of the thighs. And I like to scoot the, the buckle to one side so it's really easy for me to cinch it. And when I say cinch it, I mean it. So um, the more you can cinch it without, you know, you don't want to kill yourself, of course, but you don't hurt yourself, but you want to cinch it really tight because that brings the legs into internal rotation, which you, you hear me talk about all the time how good that is for your back. And once you have them in internal rotation, you just start to sit back on the those blankets and you've got two of them. So you can kind of use them, um, you can you can uh, jiggy jog them, terrace them a little bit if, if that's too much. Head can be on the block. Arms can be out in goal post or T. If that's too much for you, they can be more down by your sides. And you just take a moment, I call this, one of, one of the things I call this is bowsprit training 101. It's really encouraging you to feel the back bend. The legs are being supported, so you don't have to work so hard with the legs, but you can use some muscle energy to draw up through the spine and remember that heart lift we did earlier. So here's the back bend, and hopefully that feels good to you. Here's a hint. If you feel too much pinching in the low back, press the heels down to lift your booty. Scoop the tailbone under like you're trying to point it more towards the heels and then place it back down. And that should give you the freedom that you need. Good. And then here's the other thought is activate muscle energy. So the arms can gently press down onto the earth and you can use the muscle energy to draw the muscles around the spine, lift up, and then add abdominals. And you breathe. And just begin to notice where's the pull. So I'm recognizing that I feel the pull, a uh, pull in my, underneath my frontal left rib. So I know that there's a uh, a little bit of a tightness in that left psoas. You don't want your hands to get numb or get tingly, so I just noticed mine were getting so, so I'm moving them down a little bit. And then I'm just feeling into that place underneath the left rib that feels tight, and I'm gonna see if I can inflate it with my breath. got about three more breaths to go. We're not going to be here super long because it's not a restorative class. It's just a nice way to enter the practice with a little bit of a soft back bend. And deep breathing. For our last few breaths, we're going to snow angel our arms up overhead if possible and grab our opposite elbow so that our forearms are stacked above our head as best we can. And if you're using a block, you might even be able to squeeze the upper arm bones around that block to get a little more intercostal opening. Make sure that as you get deeper in the back bend, that the more deeply you back bend, the more abdominal action you need. One more breath here. And then you're just very gently gonna switch your arms. So your other arm is on top, same pose. Grabbing those opposite elbows. The more you go into the back bend, the more the intercostals open, the more you wanna support the spine with the low belly and the mid belly and the upper stern or the lower sternum. Breathe, you got one more breath here. You can actually grab those elbows a little bit isometrically uh, to help open up the pose. Good, and then gently release. Slowly bend your knees, take your time. If you have access to the little buckle, 
unravel or open the buckle so that you can get your legs out from the strap. Makes it a little safer, easier to get out. And then you just scoot your hips off to the right and you let yourself just rock off of those blankets. Now we're gonna turn those blankets into the other configuration. And you're gonna take the block and place it so that it's, it's um, medium height, but it's parallel to those blankets. And you're gonna just come on over and that might be too high if it is adjust. Otherwise, you put your ribs on that blank, on that block. If that's, I think that's a little too high for me. So I'm going to take one blanket off. I'm going to keep one blanket there. And if it's too pokey, you could even put a blanket over the top. My knees are bent and close to my body. And I'm just going to let that edge of that block come into my intercostal there, my first two or so. And if that feels okay to me, I'm gonna bring my opposite hand to the shoulder and I'm gonna stretch over, like I'm trying to round over that block. And then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna move that block up to the next two intercostals. And it doesn't need to be perfect if you can't figure out which the next two are. <laughs> hand to the shoulder and you just do an opening over that block as if you could also kind of squeeze the muscles around that block. I think that's probably impossible, but that might be the feeling. Good, and then release that. Bring that block up a little higher into those intercostals. Take a cleansing breath. You can scoot the hips, get comfy, as comfy as you can with this little knifey edge in the ribs. Hand to the shoulder, take it up and over and Find yourself in a nice stretch for those ribs. Last breath here. Okay, come up. We've got one more on that side. It's almost in the armpit. Hand to the shoulder, up and over. Feel that gentle stretch. Okay, release. Come out gently. Come to sitting for a moment and just, just feel into that. Just notice if you close your eyes, if you feel how much longer that side is than the other side. Whew, to me, it feels super dramatic. So I want to make myself more even. So I'm going to go second side. I'm going to flip that blanket around um, and I'm going to place the block on it and begin to work into the other side, intercostals. And I always find it interesting here just to note um, where you feel it. I just realized I forgot to hit record today. Bring your hand to your shoulder and begin to stretch over. And inhale to come up. Move the block, two more intercostals. Think you know what to do now. You just take a couple breaths when you get there. You just breathe. It's like you're trying to round over that block and open the other side. Okay, coming on up. Keep coming up. Breathing, hand to shoulder. Take your time. Let this have a meditative aspect towards it. That's what makes yoga different than just an exercise routine. You try to move back into your breath, conscious action, feeling into the body. And coming on up, I think we have one more, almost in the armpit there. Woo, baby. There's a sticky spot for me. Elbow up, pressing over. Mm, last breath. And gently release, come to sitting. Just take a moment to notice the difference left and right. Ah, good, beautiful. Let's move our blankets off to the side and let's have our blocks so they're handy towards the front of the mat, just in case you need them. That's always a really good thing. And we're gonna come to cat-cow 
We're gonna move right away into dancing cat cow because we got kind of this rib theme going on. So that means as you do the cow tilt, the hips swing off to the side. And as you do the cat tilt, they scoop under and around to the other side. And then they stick out as you do cow and you keep going and it's a little bit like that barrel roll, but now you're feeling it more in the hips. And you're like trying to clean out that inner edge of the barrel. And again, you're looking for those places that feel sticky and that's where you slow down and get into those places with a little more articulation. Use the breath. Generally speaking, the cow movement is the in-breath and the cat movement, the more of the effort is the out-breath. Let's go the other way. In-breath as we scoop around for cow. Out-breath cat. Looking for those sticky tight places in that part of the spine. One more. Inhaling and exhaling. Beautiful. And then you're going to sit on back on your heels and you're going to grab one of your blankets again. You'll bring that blanket pillow fold, so that's the bigger fold. You bring that into your lap and you do one roll. So you've got one little fold. <coughs> Excuse me. The big toes are touching, knees are wide back and apart. Maybe not a bad idea here to have a block handy as well. All right, so you're going to take that pillow fold or that little fold and I make a little shape. It's like I'm molding it around my belly and my hips there. It's a little bit like an omega shape. And then you press down on that fold, lengthen up through the crown, and then come on over, bow forward, head goes on the block, whatever version or height it feels good for you. And the arms go down by the sides so that the shoulders roll forward of the knees and the hands kind of tuck in. And you just let this pose, let the shoulders and hips be equally grounded, equally releasing. And just breathe into the spine, let the hips get heavy, the shoulders get heavy. And then you feel the pressure of that blanket in the abdomen helps stretch out the low spine and sometimes even a little bit in the mid spine. So a couple more breaths here. Breathing into anything that's tight. Imagine you could inflate those places. <clears throat> All right, hands press down by your knees. Inhale, look forward so it looks like cow tilt. And let your sitting bones flare apart. Then pull in your abdominals and keep coming up like that. So you come all the way up to sitting. You're going to take that blanket, put it off to the side. We're going to scoot our left leg forward into a lunge. So grab it as best you can and swing it forward. If blocks need to be here because that's you need that extra support, please do. Otherwise, fingertips to the floor. Take a breath, just feeling into that first stretch. You're trying not to just drop your right hip to the floor. My right hip loves to hang down there, but I'm gonna discipline it to come back up so that my left hip and right hip are about at the same height. And then I imagine that I'm just stretching forward through the front knee, just to open the groin. It's like you're trying to open the inner thighs there. You're just not letting that right hip drop down. It likes that. And then sometimes we get an overextension in the hip flexor. From here, you're gonna press into that front foot and flex it and start to move towards straight. But you don't have to get towards straight. That might not work for you. And then you inhale, come forward, remembering not to let that right hip sag. So you just come forward into the lunge and then back. It's a little bit of a massage in the hamstrings 
and the quadricep and that squeezing behind the knee is really good for that lymph node there so that's good and the ones in the hips get a little stimulation too so besides being good for the stretch and the strengthening we get another benefit there inhale one more think wide in the hips here exhale think wide in the hips there beautiful and then we're going to come back to our lunge we're going to walk up onto our front knee and I'm gonna have you press down and forward like the core work we've done, the, the bracing. And then you're gonna bring your hands to your tabletop again. So the fingers can be interlaced and you're pressing down on that tabletop. And then you inhale over to the right. You press down, you think cat tilt. You inhale to the right, press down, think cat. Inhale to the right, press down, think, think cat. Inhale back to center, take a breath, and then inhale to the left, exhale, think cat, you're pressing. Inhale to the left, press down, cat tilt. Inhale to the left, press down, cat. Oh, and then come back to center. Uh, hold yourself onto the floor as you sneak that left leg back to Vajrasana. And just take your hands in your lap here for a moment and just feel what's happening left and right, noticing the shifts, the changes, the breath. Okay, shall we attack that one on the other side? So we're getting strong legs, we're getting open ribs, super good. You're gonna swing that right leg forward, use your blocks if you need to, otherwise touching the floor. And just for some good awareness, just notice if that left hip likes to just hang. If it does, bring it up so it's almost equidistant from the floor as the right hip. And you just kind of work into the awareness of that for a moment with your breath. Ah, breathing in, breathing out, feeling that imprinting of your alignment. See if you can soften through the shoulders and the neck and the jaw. Last breath here, we begin our movement practice. So we press back with that front heel towards straight, getting into the hamstrings, inhaling forward, looking forward, little teeny back bend, and then exhale back. And it's just mindful movement. You don't have to get anywhere too fast. You do it at whatever level and speed feels good for your awareness, your alignment, and your stretch. Hmm, let's do one more after this, inhaling as you lunge, exhaling as you uh, hamstring stretch, and then come back to your lunge, walk up onto that front knee, press down and traction forward so you get a little more core work. You're going to take your hands interlaced, goofy finger style, they're pressing down on an imaginary countertop, and then you inhale to the left, exhale, push down, think cat tilt. Inhale to the left, press down cat. <sighs> inhale to the left, press down cat. Okay, scoop it around. Back other side, so right on that countertop. Inhale to the right, press down cat. Inhale to the right, press down cat tilt. Inhale to the right, press down cat. Beautiful. Come on back, scoot that leg back into Vajrasana. Rest your hands, rest your eyes. Big deep breath. Hmm, beautiful, notice how you feel a little more expansive left and right equally, at least that's my hope for you. Let's come into downward facing dog. We'll start by coming into tabletop, toes are tucked under, knees slightly behind your hips. Inhale, look up, there's the cow tilt, so the sitting bones move back and apart. You root down with those strong hands and move those hips back and up to the sky. I think it's better to have knees soft and spine extended than knees long and spine rounded. So bend your knees enough that you can get those sitting bones up to the sky. Activate core so everything is supported in that extension. 
Press the arms down. Feel every finger pad, even as you externally rot the, uh, rotate the upper arm bones. One more breath. Feel that beautiful extension of the spine. And then inhale, tippy toes. Walk your way up to the front of the mat. You've got your blocks there if you need them for Uttanasana. Otherwise, fingertips to the floor, knees soft. And you just bow, let your head heavy. Get super heavy and hang as if that weight like a bowling ball could just stretch through the spine. And you're breathing. Letting the tensions unravel out of the spine, out of the hamstrings. You feel your feet like little gecko feet. Like they're trying to hold on to an upside down ceiling. And then you bring the energy up the legs and make the sitting bones wing out equally left and right. You feel that stretch. Beautiful. From here, we inhale halfway up. Exhale, bend the knees. You're just going to swing your arms behind you, interlace your hands, and bow forward here, just diving into a standing forward fold, getting a nice little stretch for the shoulders. Okay, so now you inhale halfway up, soften the knees, and you're just going to roll your right shoulder open and look over to the right. You can bend your left knee even more. And then you drop that down. You can bend your right knee even more and roll the left shoulder and look over to the left. So keep going back and forth like that. You're just pressing through the legs, bending and extending and stretching open those shoulders. Got one more each side. Use your breath. And then come back to center, bring elbows to the knees, look forward like a cow tilt, draw the belly in and up, and come up to standing. Beautiful, take a cleansing breath, close your eyes for a moment, just feel how good it feels to stand in a strong, anchored, grounded stance with the crown lifting towards the heavens, inhale deeply, Exhale completely. Inhale, fly your arms up overhead, look up. Exhale, dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Utkatasana, hands to the hips. Pause there for a moment so that you can find your cow tilt and you can find your abdominal work. And then from there, you press down and come up to standing. Exhale, release. We've got two more of those. They're so good for you. Inhale, fly. It's called half sun salutation. Exhale, bow forward. Uttanasana. With each breath we move, inhaling Ardha. Exhaling Utka. Inhaling here and exhaling here. So you really work that pose. Really feel into your low back. Make sure that both sides of the spine are hugging around the back, belly strong. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale, fly. Exhale, dive. This is also super good for regulating blood pressure, but you have to make sure you breathe deeply, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling to Ardha. Exhaling to Utkatasana. Hands float to the hips. We take a few breaths here to really set it up nicely. It's like we're trying to sit back on a little kid's chair. The abdominals come in, pick up the heart, and we inhale to come up. Exhale, release. Let's do one more for thoracic spine. Inhale, fly your arms up overhead. Grab your right wrist with your left hand and bow to the side. Now, if you wanna make it just a little more challenging, you bend your knees and you take your right leg and tuck it in behind your left. The left knee is bent deeply and you just stretch. Oh, see if you can make sure that the head doesn't migrate forward like you're trying to text while you do yoga, but let the chin come back in line and feel that deep stretch through the side body. Beautiful, last breath. Inhale, root down with the legs, strong abdominals. 
Come on up. Exhale. Yoga is not for sissies, is it? Roll the shoulders, <laughs> cleansing breath. Here we go, second side. Inhaling, sweeping, grabbing that left wrist, bowing it to the side, feeling that strong. This is called crescent pose. As we're looking like a crescent moon, you're gonna bend your knees, step your left leg behind the right. See if you can keep your head out of texting mode. Let the chin draw back. Core is active, hips and shoulders drop back to the back plane. Beautiful, press down to come on up. Wow, exhale, release, pause and feel, take a breath. Mm, beautiful, we're gonna do one more hip stretch before we get down on the ground. So this one's really nice with blocks or you could use a chair or a bed or a counter or a desk if this is hard for you. But we're gonna bring our right ankle over our left knee and we're gonna bend the left leg deeply until we can touch those blocks. And you might notice that my uh, right foot is really active here, my lifted foot. It's a walking foot. So what I mean by that is the inner and outer ankle are equally long. So it's e easy to go into funny positions here to shorten the inner ankle. You want to extend it long. And then you bend the knee and you straighten it and you give yourself just a little hip massage. It should be, you should be feeling it on the right hip as you bend and straighten. Mm, and you just add a breath, inflating that hip. We're gonna stay the next breath, we're gonna stay. We're gonna see if we can bring our hands to our knee and our foot, little balance. If that feels good, you can place your hands on your shoulders, press down and reach up to standing. That's always a fun challenge. And then release that foot down. Take a breath and just notice where you're feeling that pose, where the residual is, where the breath had to enter. Oh, and then we go second side. So we're gonna stand on our right foot and bring the left leg across. Find, bend enough in that standing leg to find the blocks, a chair, a blanket, a desk, whatever you need. Just notice that my foot is flexed and my inner and outer ankles are equally long. And then I bend and I straighten. And you should be feeling this in your left hip. It should be getting the massage. Hmm. And you just breathe along with that or even groan along with that if you need to. We're gonna finish up here in the knee bend. You're gonna stay there if you want to, if you have to, if you can, or you just bring your hands to your knee and your foot just to feel that out. Hands can also migrate to the shoulders and the elbows lift us up. And then we release down and shake it out. Give yourself a little salsa dance there, a little shoulder roll. Beautiful, we're gonna come onto our backs for one last exercise. A new favorite of mine, I just learned this one and I'm really enjoying it. It's a little difficult to teach without seeing really carefully, so it's possible you might wanna look at the screen first because it's also hard to teach and do at the same time, but once you get it, it's not hard. So you're in set to bond a prep with your feet, your knees are bent and your hands are down by your sides. You're looking straight up to the sky. And we start by inhaling, sweeping the arms up overhead and lifting the hips. That's the inhale. The exhale is full and, and not rapid, but full and active. So you exhale. Once the exhale is out, without breathing, you pull the abdominals in and up like you're trying to get them underneath the rib cage. You keep that without breathing and you slowly drop your hips to the floor and you'll get a deep inner belly stretch. When the hips touch the floor, you exhale and bring the hands down by your hip. So I'll keep talking you through that. You'll get it eventually. I recommend about 10 of these if you can. If your belly gets sticky, like if you have imbalances or scoliosis or digestive issues or old surgery scars, this is a great one to stretch the internal fascia. So the hands are by your hips. You inhale, sweep them up overhead as the hips come up. Exhale, release all the breath. 
Without breathing, pull the abdominals up and under the rib cage and drop the hips down to the floor slowly. As you reach there, exhale, bring your hands down by your sides. Here we go. Inhale, sweep and lift. Exhale, pull it in. Hips drop down like you're trying to do a back bend. Slowly and get the stretch when the hips touch, the hands exhale back down by your side. Let's do three more. Inhaling, take it in. Exhale, release it out. Pull it up. Drop it down. Exhale, hands to hips. Two more. Inhale. Big inhale. Sweep it up. Release it out. Draw those abdominals underneath the ribs. Drop the hips down like a back bend. Exhale, hands return to the side. I think we've got one more in us. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Pull it up. Slow drop. Hands down by hips. Release. Take a breath and then just enjoy. See if you notice any more fluidity in the belly region. I highly recommend that one. Get that sticky, that sticky stuff a little bit released. Good. From here, you're just going to bring the right knee into the chest, hands around the back of the thigh, stretch that leg towards the sky. Don't worry if it's the biggest stretch of your life. Here's what I'd like you to be a little more concerned about, and that is that you don't shove the low back into the floor. So there's a little bit of a cow tilt here, enough that you get the weight of the body more on the backs of the hips and there's a lumbar curve. And then extend the heel all oh, into the sky. And you can do little rotations with your foot if you'd like, if you wanna distract yourself from the hamstring stretch, or you can just stay and breathe. Imagine that the breath could broaden the hamstring fibers all the way up, even into behind the knee and behind the calf and behind the Achilles. Everything is getting stretched and open. Beautiful. We're gonna keep bringing that knee now into the chest as we bend the knee and we'll take half happy baby. So that means you reach for the outer edge of the foot. My right arm is on the inside, so the elbow and the knee are isometrically active towards each other. And then I just pull that knee down towards my outer shoulder. Half happy baby. Take another breath here. And then gently release. Take a breath. Second side, bringing left knee into the chest. Our hands wrap around the thigh, stretch it up. Notice if you just dumped into the low back. If you did, fix that. Become aware, become mindful of that lumbar spine. It's the only one you have. You want to keep it healthy. It likes the curve. It likes support from the belly. And you just get that stretch there, driving that heel into the earth, even as you feel that lumbar curve. I mean, drive the heel into the sky, not the earth. And then you can do ankle circles clean out the inside of that honey jar so that when you do happy baby pose you can lick the honey or can drip down into your mouth mm. <laughs> just reading about the benefits of honey recently um, how they actually are showing a link between honey intake and for women and cholesterol benefits I thought that was really interesting okay bend the knees you're gonna reach onto the inside of that leg, but to the outside of the foot so that the left knee and left elbow are pressing into each other. There's that honey dripping down, catch it. Maybe even catch it in your eyeballs or somewhere where you need something soothing and sweet. One more breath here. Beautiful. Can you take full happy baby, grabbing that other leg up and joining it? And then, because happy babies move around and explore, go ahead and do that. See if you can 
bend and straighten, rock and roll, just play around with your legs. Bending and straightening and oh, it's like a little massage into the low back, into the hips. Okay, we finish that up by bringing our hands to our ankles, giving ourselves a little foot massage, rubbing, rubbing. Bring the soles of the feet together in a prayer. Drop them down to the floor. Bring your elbows by your sides. Robot arms press through your hips and your feet and your elbows and your head. That was feet, hips, elbows, head. And lift up through the heart. Keep pressing the feet in together. Try not to lift the chin too high. Like you want to feel the pressure right underneath the eyes. And lift up and feel that. Stretch through the belly, stretch through the hips, strengthening for the neck, and then release. Take your legs out in Shavasana. Take as long as you need here. This is where you integrate and practice letting go. This is where the benefits of the neurological part of the practice really get good here because the body is now translating and understanding and integrating all that beautiful work. So stay here as long as you like. This is where I leave you. Thanks for joining me with your practice. Namaste. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Namaste.